Hello there. I'm very pleased to be back in the Signal Wire podcast studio with my good friend and colleague, Kevin. How are you doing today, Kevin? Great, Dave. How are you doing? Pretty good. Very pleased to be here with you because every time we get together, it's to talk about one of your code snippets. And those are the amazing things that you put together where you've got real life working code and you're giving it away for free. You're putting it out there so that people can go ahead and either use it as it is or build on top of it or, you know, just do with it what they will. And that, that's a great thing. What are we going to be looking at today, Kevin? Uh, well, today we packaged a IVR demo for you. So basically that's an interactive voice response. Um, you know, these can be very complex and cumbersome to build and maintain. So we tried to simplify it on the SignalWire platform by setting it up so you can modify a, a basic JSON file with all your menu trees in it and it'll dynamically link them together. That's a great idea because I know traditionally from a developer's point of view, not necessarily a user, but from a developer's point of view, these things can be a little bit cumbersome and not very easily uh, made flexible. And yet it sounds like you've pulled off some flexibility there. So why don't you talk us through that, please? Sure. Um, I'm going to jump right over to my screen right now and we'll go through the general setup. Um, Basically, this snippet, when you go to get it, it's called Snippets Simple Dynamic IVR. Uh, basically, it's going to show you how to implement a dynamic voice response menu. Uh, so what you're going to need, this is built off of Python. So you're going to need Python environment, a SignalWire SDK, a SignalWire phone number that's provisioned. We have some uh, links and demos on how to do that as well on the SignalWire.com. Right. Uh, we also optionally can let you use a Docker environment. So uh, we have all the images published, so you can just download them, turnkey, and test it and try it out if you don't feel like getting your hands dirty with some of the code. Um, awesome. So just to give you a, just to give you a little heads up as to the methods and the endpoints that are here, um, this app has basically two endpoints exposed uh, as for the uh, number to hook against. Uh, we have get menu. And get menu, basically, it will default to the main menu if you don't specify one. And I'll show you in the code exactly how that works. Right. Um, and it also, when you press a menu option or you select from that menu, if a parameter is presented to it, it will generate or navigate against the action, which I'll get into in a little bit. The other endpoint is get voicemail. And this is just a fictitious label voice response set up just to simulate a transfer to an endpoint. Um, okay. So the first part... The first part, David, what we're going to have people do is go into the menus.json file. And this is basically the structure for how the menu trees are built. So if you see here, we have a tree called main, yeah, a tree same. called sales, yeah. and a tree called tech. Um, you know, right now it's set up for text to speech, but we could expand this to also accept, you know, files for play if you want to do an audio uh, menu. Or, right. or whatever or whatever you might prefer in your case or use case. Um, so basically, the main menu here has two options under it. And each option, this is the key you would press. So, or And it's also the index in the tree. So these it's holding the spot. You have a verbiage and an action. So this is the menu number that would be pressed. This is the verbiage that is spoken. And this is the desired action if someone pushes the key. Um, so right now we have action get menu menu equals sales which when you go back to the menu again when it requests it it's going to jump to the sales menu and it would read this one to you okay um, now i'm going to show you the environment file uh, set up it's going to uh, basically include your signal wire space your signal wire project and your signal wire token uh, your provisioned phone number and your host name um, the host name is important um, for relative urls uh, when, when you're making requests in from the code. So if you have a file hosted or um, you have a, a path that you want handled a certain way or when you're doing in your actions, you need to have that reference correctly. Okay. Um, for, for the Docker environment, we have some simple commands and instructions to get going on here. You could also run it nat natively and we have all the documentation you'll need as well. Um, so let's take a look at the actual, yeah. So let's take a look at the actual code here. It's um, all commented out for you guys so you guys can see exactly what's going on. Um, here's the get menu that we were just talking about, which accepts the request for get menu from a getter or a post. 
that makes an instance of voice response. And it's going to read that menus.json that we just set up into memory. Um, and the next line here, you're going to see if the menu is not in menus, default to the main menu. So it's very, very simple to, um, to set up. And here we have it looking for a DTMF input. So if someone pushed a digit, um, it'll automatically route to the action. So it's, it's, uh, it allows you to build some pretty complicated things with literally, I think, what is this, 20, 30 lines of code? It's not, not that much. Um, there you have That's it. That's a great, uh, a great uh, way to do it, Kevin. I'm sure people are going to appreciate that flexibility and being able to kind of put the JSON thing in there. I noticed that you'd, sorry, the JSON structure. I noticed you'd got um, two sort of top level menu options and then each subsequent menu had also got two options. Is there any limit on the number of options in there? No, you could make that tree as large or small as you wish. You can also generate that menu with a little bit of modification to the code to be driven off of a database. So if you want something to be uh, handled in an even more dynamic fashion, um, you know, you can have it off of live data or perhaps an active directory of some kind or something if you want to have the menus drawn off of, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah, even more flexibility. That's great. And so the, the actual code snippets and the readme and all stuff like that is hosted at GitHub. Um, can you give people a specific place to go or should we uh, pop a link in near this video? I think we'll pop a link in the end of the video, um, but it's all in the SignalWire GitHub and their public repositories. And we'll have a whole bunch of them in there under snippets. So this particular one, I believe we'll say... Uh, simple IVR, wasn't it, Kevin? Yes, this one, will, this one will be under snippets, simple dynamic IVR. Simple dynamic IVR, that's great. Okay, well, thanks for dropping by and coming in to tell us about that. And uh, we'll look forward to the next one. No problem. And if anyone has any questions, just reach out on Slack or email us and we're more than happy to help you out. Great stuff. Thanks a lot, Kevin. All the best.